Three corporate Democrats in the House Energy and Commerce Committee are fighting to strip the budget reconciliation bill of a popular provision that would allow for Medicare to negotiate drug prices directly with pharmaceutical companies. I'm sure our incredibly intelligent audience already knows that it's banned. It, Medicare cannot directly negotiate drug prices, which blows, I mean, it blows my mind every time it's back in the news. Uh, but that is the case. And it's something that pharmaceutical companies and uh, their lobbyists have fought really, really hard to um, not only make happen, but to preserve. And that's what's happening right now with these three corporate Democrats. So representatives Kathleen Rice, Scott Peters, and Kurt Schrader reportedly claimed that including Medicare drug price negotiations in the package, get this, would keep the legislation from ultimately passing despite polls showing the provision actually has widespread support. And I'll show you some receipts uh, in regard to that in just a moment. Now, this is my favorite part of the story because of how absurd it is. So Representative Rice said this, I do not support advancing policies <laughs> that are not fiscally responsible and jeopardize the bill's final passage. So according to Representative Rice, and of course she's lying, Allowing for Medicare to negotiate for lower drug prices, which would save money for the Medicare system, is not fiscally responsible, Nando. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no, very irresponsible to, um, you know, spend less on prescription drugs <laughs> than more. That's uh, up is down, black is white. Um, I'm sure we will see a barrage of criticism from the liberal media uh, about a supposed lack of unity uh, f uh, and disloyalty from these three representatives for uh, tanking not only a very popular provision, you know, like you said, something like ninety percent of uh, of voters support it, uh, but but the centerpiece of both Joe Biden's uh, agenda, but also the entire Democratic caucus in the House, which ran on this over and over again uh, in twenty eighteen, if I recall correctly. So yeah, I'm I'm sure we'll see. I'm sure we'll see those takes. Yeah, it's amazing how little this, how little attention this got in the press, right? Um, now, let me be clear. Right now, committees are negotiating the bill, the language of the bill, the various provisions that are included in the bill. And while it was voted down as a result of these three corporate Democrats in the uh, House Energy and Commerce Committee, the House Ways and Means Committee voted in favor of the provision. The point here is that there's going to be a showdown in regard to the most relevant and critical provisions in this bill. Now, you have progressive lawmakers in the House who uh, continue to issue incredibly strong statements about how they will block the corporate desired bipartisan infrastructure bill unless they ensure they get these provisions passed, unless they ensure that they get $3.5 trillion passed in the reconciliation bill. Um, but look, the only irresponsible behavior um, is really coming from these corporate Democrats who are actually crushing their own constituents with these ridiculous stunts on behalf of their corporate donors. So Americans per currently pay two to three times more than people mm. in other wealthy countries for prescription drugs. One in four struggle to afford prescriptions and 30% of Americans report having cut pills in half or skipping doses to save money. But, you Jesus. know, Democratic lawmaker uh, Kathleen Rice would have you believe that negotiating for lower drug prices is somehow fiscally irresponsible. Just in 30% 30% of Americans are cutting pills in half. Yeah like the medicine that they need of uh, one in three Americans are doing that. Like, it's just, it, it's again, I mean, I, it's, it's the, the, the cynicism that this kind of thing breeds right um, after, I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the double bind of American politics, right. And that it's like uh, you're stuck between these two parties um, who neither of, neither of whom give a shit about you. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you're browbeaten to to vote for these Democrats all the time. And then when they take power, uh, there's always something. There's always like, and it's always like one or two thing, you know, like it's always like, oh, the parliamentarian. Oh, the, the, the it's in the committee of the thing. You know, like it's these kind of like incredibly arcane um, things within the institutions that at this at the soonest kind of at the smallest roadblock, they just throw their hands up and be like, well, 
it's in the committee of the energy and the thing and we can't do that you know we can't we can't do it and the parliamentarian said the thing and we, we can't do it um and it's like we we get like the the voters get all riled up and they get so emotionally invested in these election outcomes and uh, there's so much money spent and so much energy spent and so much media coverage about them um and then they go and they do the thing they pull the lever for for the democrats and then they then they go and they do this and it's Again, there's no excuse. There's no excuses for it. Uh, this is they control the house. There's no they control it. There's it's not like the big bad Republicans um, are doing anything to block this. So um, it's it's one of those things that just breeds a an incredible amount of cynicism in in the population. It just beats totally. people down because they they want it. This is like the most popular policy it is as big of a no brainer as you could ever imagine in American policy in American politics. Um, and they're fact, not doing it. Yeah, in fact, why don't we, we go to um, just how many Americans want this particular provision included. Let's look at uh, Kathleen Rice's district and how her constituents feel. Turns out that 90% of Rice's constituents support the provision, while only 18% believe the argument uh, long made by pharmaceutical companies that allowing uh, negotiation by Medicare will harm innovation. Similar poll results were found both in Peters's and Schrader's districts. In fact, uh, the New York Times, uh, not the New York Times, my bad, uh, the Data for Progress uh, group put together this handy map that shows you, um, gives you a little visual of just how popular this particular provision is. So the darker the shade of blue, the more support that part of the country has for the provision. And as you can see, at least, at least 88% of voters um, in even the more conservative parts of the country want this provision included. And then you get to places like, I mean, look at how dark blue Florida is. Look at how dark blue Maine is. Look at how dark blue, you know, parts of Texas happens to be. And it's because this is a this is really a nonpartisan issue. Americans yeah. in general overwhelmingly support this provision because everyone's getting completely screwed by the high, high cost of pharmaceutical drugs. And so finally, what is drug? driving or influencing these lawmakers to uh, essentially go against the desires of their own constituents. Well, Peters and Schrader have both accepted tens of thousands of dollars in donations from the pharmaceutical industry this election cycle. Pharmaceutical companies are the top contributors to Peters's campaign in the 2021 and 2022 cycle, donating more than $88,000 so far. And look, these lawmakers, corporate Democrats, corporate Republicans, they have no problem hoeing themselves for cheap. And that's, you know, $88,000. You might wonder, wow, is that all it takes um, to essentially vote against something to continue pain and suffering that literally impacts their own constituents? And the answer is yes. There's there's really, they're bottom of the barrel people. They don't yeah. care. Yeah. The the pollster, like the data scientist, or I, I don't know what his title is, uh, David Shore, the data analyst, I guess, who's very influential in within the Democratic Party circles. And uh, is not exactly like I would I wouldn't describe him as like an idealistic guy. Um, he uh, he said that <laughs> of the policies that they've polled in like they've polled like something like 184 potential policies, because like his whole theory is like Democrats should run on. Uh, the most popular policies that they could possibly run on. Um, and he pulled like a hundred and some 80 some policies. And this policy was consistently the most popular one, which is probably why um, the Democrats ran almost exclusively on this. Like if you looked at ads in the 2018 uh, midterms, this was like the issue that they kept on harping on back over and over and over again, um, because at their internal polling showed them that it was like literally the most popular policy that they could that they could possibly implement. Like, no divisiveness, no potential kind of like right wing backlash from from voters. You know, it wasn't like touching guns or or defund the police or uh, you know opening the floodgates to all the immigrants or something like that. It, this is like the kind of thing that is about as safe uh, a win uh, as you could possibly get in American politics, and they're not going to do it. No, they're not going to do it. And, you know, they bank on exactly what has happened after voting this down in their committee. They bank on the corporate media avoiding the story, 
right? Um, yeah. So, you know, you got to go to independent sources, you got to go to places like The Intercept to really figure out what's happening during these negotiations. In terms of corporate media, you'll get, you know, pieces published by Axios arguing that, oh, well, you know, Senator Cinema has this accountant-like focus on the oh national God. debt. And it's like, oh my God. F off, dude. Like we know what we that know was what's the most really embarrassing. Going that was the most embarrassing piece. That was one of the most embarrassing pieces I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. Like these journalists, like who are these people? They're like little, they're like little children. Little children, these guys dangle a little thing in front of them. They're like, oh, like Google Gaga, like a little mobile, <laughs> like a little infant <laughs> playing with like a little mobile above above their crib. They're like, oh my God, look how amazing this is. He's got the spreadsheets. He's got spreadsheets. And it's Imagine. like, you, how can you people believe yeah. this shit? No, imagine considering yourself a journalist and literally just taking everything politicians tell you at face value and just regurgitating it either on air or in the case of Axios, just like publishing it. It's like, oh, accountant like focus on her spreadsheets. I, I got news for you. She the only spreadsheets that she might be focusing on include the uh, donors that have contributed to her campaigns and exactly how much money they've given. She's not pouring. Yeah, she's got like a. Debt. She's got like a no. She's got like in Clueless. Uh, she got like a share in Clueless. She's got like her outfits in a spreadsheet, and she does like these kind of uh, random algorithms to like match her skirt with her blouse, uh, and you know that's how she chooses her dope outfits to to do to vote down a fifteen dollar uh, minimum wage. That's how she does it. She puts the spreadsheets in, and that's what they tell her to wear. That's right. Yep. I mean, it's just it's so pathetic. And look, uh, if Democrats genuinely do care about unity, uh, something that they, you know, I mean, Biden was really the most vociferous about the need for unity. I, I really do think that there are some Republican voters that Democrats could court if they materially improve their lives. So there actually is unity in the electorate when it comes to policies that would improve their lives. It's just that, you know, a lot of the division that we see in the country is based on what our politicians and what our media is hyper-focused on. And it's the culture war BS to deflect from the bread and butter issues that the vast majority of Americans do have. If you enjoyed this video from Jacobin Weekends, please hit like and subscribe. That way, you'll enjoy all of our backlog, as well as all of our future content, including interviews, live streams, and clips. Thank you.